How you doing everyone? So I'm standing here next to this beautiful Howgate Wonder apple tree. This tree was only planted a few years ago. This is the first time we've seen some fruit on them. Aren't they huge? This is a gigantic apple, the Howgate Wonder. One of the biggest varieties we can grow. Imagine the amount of juice you'd get from an apple that big. So I'm up here in an area that we are quickly referring to as the Eastfield Forest Garden. And for some of you who have watched our farm vlogs over the years, you might recognize that I'm actually up here in the market garden, the site of the market garden. Over the last six years, this area around me covering about half an acre in area was made up with about 85 vegetable beds, 15 meters long by 75 centimeters wide, and gave us a growing area of around quarter of an acre of raised beds. For the last six years, that's what predominantly this piece of land has been used for, obviously also integrated with fruit trees and um, windbreaks, wood fuel coppice areas. But its main use over the last wee while has been to grow vegetables and we were running a veg box business, selling our veg uh, within 15 mile radius of the farm. But we always had it in the back of our minds that we would eventually progress beyond annual production on this site, we wanted to integrate more and more woody perennials, trees, shrubs, into this market garden design. And we started that by planting these forest garden tree rows. They stretch on behind me for about 30 meters. And we put in two in 2017, dividing up some of the vegetable plots. And as you can see, that's no more. The vegetable birds have pretty much gone. I'll get to that in a minute. This was a way of bringing in an element of perennial agriculture into this quite annual dominated system. Great wildlife corridors, fantastic way of growing fruit, plums and apples, nitrogen fixing Eliagnus, comfrey, mint, fennel, lovage. It's a real assortment. It's been producing very well. We're picking a lot of apples from these tree rows now. A few years after that, we planted another one at the bottom here and another one up to the top, which is where I started this film with the Howgate Wonder apple. Over those years of producing vegetables, these forest garden tree rows were just growing quietly in the background. Once they were set up after maybe a year or so of concentrating on adding the wood chip uh, mulch below these trees, we didn't really have to do anything else except for harvesting the fruit. A very easy system to look after and it allowed us to continue our job as market gardeners, growing the veg, selling the veg. As a lot of people out there probably did in 2020, we evaluated a lot of things, thought to the future of what we want to do here. We've got eight acres here in total with goats and orchards and ponds and native woodland, various different projects going on that we enjoy doing and we love that variation. And with the market garden, you really do need to focus on that quite heavily. We're looking into different forms of revenue now, different forms of income. We have our shepherd's hut. We are very much interested in returning to education and running uh, courses, but we still do love producing. Um, and so we're looking to the future now of what we can put into place here, what perennial crops we can put into place, giving us an output that we can then sell back into the local community. We now have an area which we are turning into a forest garden. It's reverting Anyway, this is what happens when you leave a, a market garden alone for years. This area has been used to us coming in and making an effect on the environment, whether that was in the early days when we were still doing a minimal tillage approach to the last few years of doing no dig. Obviously a huge amount of weeding, soil preparation and amendments. We were very much an integral part of this design. And as we've walked away, either nature has started doing its thing like these raspberries, which have just been popping up around the edges of the plots. Normally we would have either mown down to keep the area around the plots tidy, but we're now encouraging this to grow. We've been seeding the plots with a very diverse mix of grasses and herbs. So this is what's happened here. We seeded this mid-August and now being the start of October, it's grown very well over into this, which looks like a small field now. Just over a year ago, this was 10 beds. Last August, we leveled it and we seeded it again with this mix of grasses and herbs, such as plantain and yarrow and red clover. It's a very good grazing mix. What we don't want to do is to make any rash decisions and cover this all with trees straight away. Obviously, we spent a lot of time and money and energy and love converting what was this uh, neglected field when we first moved here into a very productive 
vegetable garden. Even though we've seeded this with grass, we could quite easily turn this back into vegetable beds if we want to. But I don't think we want to. I think we're very happy with the idea that the Eastfield Market Garden is quickly becoming the Eastfield Forest Garden Orchard. For what purpose? Is this going to be a very large home orchard based on the design of a natural ecosystem where we can, as a family, gather a large amount of our, our fruit needs for eating fresh, drying, for bottling? Or do we want to also design this so that we can sell any surplus? Do we want to run a community supported agriculture scheme based on fruit shares? Do we want to start a UPIC, a pick your own berry system? All of those we're talking about in great detail uh, and with great excitement at the moment. But the main thing we do know is that we're very much enjoying seeing this place um, be a much more of a forageable landscape the amount of energy that we have to put into growing annuals, even with our approaches, um, is, is quite large. Already we can feel that a system like this, based on perennials, is going to be a lot less labour intensive. <laughs>